Well, hello there. My name is HW, and thank you so much for listening to the Tone Junkie Podcast, episode 33. And we're doing a special video edition of the podcast today as we get ready for podcast version 2.0 with this little studio, podcast studio I'm building outside. We're going to have guests and stuff come in, and it's going to be fabulous. But I'm just... I'm just trying to test like how long it takes me to edit these things now and doing little things like this and and uh, just you know hey whatever trying some stuff out so um, you probably saw um, let me just let me just say something before we get into uh, profilecrate.com and my initial thoughts on the HX Stomp you just heard that beep right okay last episode for those of you who listen to the podcast you know I went off I just have been going crazy dealing with the smoke detectors in my home. There's a ladder behind me because the smoke detector up there has now started beeping. This is number two of the smoke detectors. They want to keep me up at night. They want to kill me. I want to kill them is what I meant to say. They they want to they want they want me to maybe die of sleep deprivation or something. But I'm not going to let it happen because uh, these things are going insane. I've replaced the batteries. It doesn't work. I've done the whole thing. I've taken them down. Drain the power. Hold the button down. Listen. Call me um, a futurist. Call me uh, a technocrat. But um, I can't stand electronics that don't have like digital readouts and connect with my other devices. I can't stand them. I got rid of my thermostats because I could never really figure out how it was set. Is this thing set to auto? Does it know it's supposed to change the time uh, when the other time, like, does it know like one day I'm going to wake up at seven, not eight because daylight savings, but it really is eight. Does it know to change it? Does it know when I'm home? Is it, I said it like three days ago. Is it still doing that thing? Did it change? I don't know. So I got a Nest, I use it with my phone, I got some cameras for my house, I use it with my phone, and now that this thing is like straight up trying to keep me up at night and they're beeping, going crazy, I've changed all the batteries, I've done all that, I went and just got a bunch of uh, Nest um, uh, Protects, and those are the smoke detector uh, CO2 alarms, and they're going to connect with my phone, and it's not going to beep at me, it's going to tell me what's wrong. And then when something is wrong, I can just remove one of them and that'll be that. And it's not a big deal. And they, and they work wirelessly with each other. So I don't need to worry about them interconnecting. Cause right now I think one of these is sending crazy signals to the other ones or something. I don't know, but I complained about it a lot in the last podcast. And last thing I'll say, I now look back at my life and question so many of my decisions because until it happens to you, you don't think it can. But we all have numerous small devices that make annoying chirping sounds on our ceilings of multiple rooms of our homes, and they're just waiting. And you don't think it could happen to you, but just wait until they start going off at night, waking you up. You replace the batteries, go off again the next night. Place the batteries, go go off again the next. They're starting to go crazy. We're going to look back at smoke detectors in, in, in 25 years, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me, in 50 years, we'll look back at smoke detectors and the risk of waking ourselves up, we were putting ourselves through, we're going to look at it like today, we look at amputees in the Civil War, amputation. We're just going to shake our heads and go, they didn't know any better. That was their best guess. They just didn't, they didn't know. They were putting leeches and snakes on people and going, here, let this thing bite you. They thought that was medicine. And uh, they thought, oh, that that arm's hurt. Let's just chop it off. Let's just chop it off and sear what's left. You'll be fine. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Uh, Thank you so much for listening to Tone Jerky Podcast, episode 33. Let's talk about Profile Crate. For the last year, we have been delivering free profile crate free Kemper profile packs produced by Tone Junkie, made by me and my buddies, and uh, in our studio over here in Nashville. And they're awesome. They're made with every bit of love and care uh, as our regular Tone Junkie profiles. And I'm sad to say ProfileCrate.com is going to be transitioning and um, it's kind of going to be no more. Now listen, you might be thinking, HW, I love those free packs. Come on, don't worry. I'm still going to make them. But it's becoming a lot for me to maintain both of those sites. By the way, I'm just letting that beep because I want you to come into my world and and just experience what I'm experiencing right now. Okay, the profile crate, um, uh, it's just becoming a little taxing to maintain both sites, to be getting it up. And and I've been getting a lot of customer feedback, people telling me I'm not getting emails on one, I'm getting emails on the other, I'm getting too many emails because now I'm getting both emails. Uh, Should I be on this one or that one? Here's the thing. 
My only intention for with these email lists is to have a way to inform people who want to buy this stuff when it comes out that it's around. Profile Crate was an idea where I said, let me start doing free stuff and let me give that away. And I honestly, I didn't want to, I felt at that time that Tone Junkie had developed a reputation for doing primarily boutique amps and being a praise and worship boutique amp kind of thing. Now I've tried to do some amps that I think have repaired that because I wanted to be a little more well-rounded, but I also felt on profile crit a couple times when I released an amp on Tone Junkie that was a little, that was more rock, I'd get people going, wow, I didn't expect this. And I'm going, well, you know, you don't have to buy every single pack. Not every amp has to appeal to you. I mean, I, you know, I get a lot of requests I don't take people up on. You know, I got a lot of people asking for high gain stuff and I'm not really jumping in that, although we did do the BE100, we did do the Pete, the Pete Thorne amp, and we have done some other things. We've got a Marshall Silver Jubilee that's going to come out soon, and uh, and an old school Plexi. Um, I'm still going to do, we're still going to be giving away packs. Um, we're And I, I can't quite commit to the 12 a year, the once a month thing. That's become difficult too because it's been, I don't want to release those on the same time I'm putting out a Tone Junkie one and I don't always have everything ready. So here's what I'm going to say. Tone Junkie is still going to be releasing 8 to 10 free packs just like we did on Profile Crate, but we're just going to be releasing them for free through Tone Junkie. Because there's been lots of times too where I'm like, I want to give this, I want to do a free pack of this amp and I want to do it on Tone Junkie, but I feel like, well, I need to do it on Profile Crate because I'm doing free amps there and this. And then I just wonder, and then it's just becoming a whole a whole thing. And it's, it's, it's added a layer of complication I didn't intend for there to be there. I love the idea of Profile Crate, of just giving something to the community, just doing great amps. Um, at the time I'm recording this, probably when you're listening to it, either tomorrow or the next day or the next day, um, we're going to be releasing a, fr a free, complete profile pack of the Tone King Falcon. And and what should I call it? I can't call it the Tone King Falcon. The, we're going to call it the Toking, T-O-K-I-N-G, Toking Falcor. Never-ending story. One of my childhood favorites. Yes. Okay. We're going to call it the Toking Falcor. Just made that up right now. That's literally my mother calling. I'm going to I'm gonna not answer that. Do you, do you kind of get mad at people for calling you? You know what I mean? Do you ever like... Are you ever like, don't... Why don't you just text me? You know what I mean? Okay, I got to call my mom after this. Um... There's still going to be 8 to 10. Let me jump back in here. There's still going to be 8 to 10 free Kemper profile packs a month. I'm sorry, a year. In the year. We're still going to be doing them. You're just going to be getting them through Tone, through, through Tone Junkie. I'm going to combine the email list. If you're only signed up for Profile Crate, you're going to be getting some emails that say, please sign up for the Tone Junkie list. That's going to be the new list going forward. And we're going to just going to... I'm going to leave the, the profilecrate.com site up and it's going to just point towards the pages on the Tone Junkie site where you can get these free packs. It's going to take me a couple days to do that. That's what's going on. Now listen, the Tone Junkie email list is going to be getting a ton of added value. The Tone Junkie list is going to be getting these free, still six to, I'm sorry, eight to ten free packs in a year. That's almost once a month. I just, because of the calendar, it might not be quite once a month, but almost once a month you're going to be getting free Kemper profile packs just because we love you. And the other thing is I'm going to, I'm going to, I've been doing this with profile crate. I'm going to do it now with everybody. I've, I've been releasing whenever Tone Junkie releases an actual pack, I've just been putting out our favorite profiles for free. So like if you're signed up for this email list, here's what it means. It means you really don't have to buy profiles. People ask all the time, what, what is the pack I have to get? They email me. What's the pack you, I should really get? I'm doing, I'm doing praise and worship. I'm doing rock. I'm doing blues. What am I doing? I, what's the one, what pack should I get? I'm so afraid to give you the wrong pack that honestly, if, if you tell me I bought, you said buy this pack, but I didn't love it that much. Can I get another pack? I'll just give it to you. I don't want anyone to feel duped by Tone Junkie ever, but I will say this. The real answer is what is the pack you must get? What is the one Tone Junkie pack you must get? No, not the everything pack. You could get that. If you're like me, you love having a bunch of stuff. It's the free pack. Sign up for the free pack. Get 8 to 10 free packs 
a year that are great amps. We've done the, the Mesa Mark V. We did a, a, a JMP. We did um, an Orange. We did, uh, we've done a bunch of, a Bogner, New Yorker. We did, um, we're, we're about to do the Toke to King Falcor, the Tone King Falcon. We've done a bunch of stuff. And you're going to get every, every couple weeks, you're going to get my favorites from whatever we've just done. You're going to get a couple of my favorite AC30 profiles, my favorite matchless profiles, these profiles, that profile, all the stuff. You're going to get um, stuff from the upcoming Stu G pack. You know what I mean? For free. You're going to get little samples of all that. And it's enough. You don't need to buy profiles. But you can. If you're like me and you want to have a complete library, a complete library of tone, then you can buy the everything pack or you can get whatever packs you want. You know, you can do what you, if you're really into matchless stuff, you can try those. You can try everything, you know, out and then you can, you can buy them. I am the type of person, I buy way too much stuff. I'm a little over the top. And it's all, and that's the spirit of tone junkie. That's why it's a, it's called tone junkie. I can't get enough of this stuff. I wear floral stuff. I sell floral hats and floral tea. And these tea, I mean, it's it's a monkey with a pink mohawk. It's not meant to be subtle, dudes. Sometimes people say to me, HW, uh, have you ever thought about just putting a couple less profiles in there? And the answer is no, no, because I want all the options. I want everything. Everything, more, more. I want this. I want that. I want this. I had a, I had a Helix. Then I had an HX uh, uh, native. Then um, uh, uh, now I got this, and now I want the HX Stomp to go with it. Like we're gonna talk about HX Stomp right here. I mean, I want the HX Effects to go with this. It's a whole thing. I just, just, it's, it's, it's junkieism. It's a gear. It's gas. You know what I mean? It's just that thing we believe. We believe that we need this stuff. I'm looking up here. I'm looking up on my shelf right now off off the camera and obviously on the podcast you can't see anything. I got an original deluxe memory man that I've had for years and years and years. A long time ago, I recorded a record with it. And on that record, I used two guitars, an orange AD30, and that delay unit. That was all I used. And I, I love the tones on that record. They sound killer. I dialed everything in. I got the tempos on, just slight little adjustments, turning this stupid little knob. Couldn't tap it. But it was magic. It was freaking magic. Because all the time in the studio, they would say, okay, we got to go, oh, we need this overdub again on this thing. And I'd have a tempo from a different song on there, like marked. And I'd go, hang on, let me just try the tempo from that song with this thing. And it would make some subdivision that didn't make any sense. But it's something I never would have come across, right? Had I been had I been tapping everything in. I, I just, you know, just looking at the marker positions, I'd be like, let me just, let me do it at that, but let me slow it down even more so it's sluggish or something. It was just, it, I don't need that unit. I don't use it anymore. But who cares? I leave it on the shelf because I'm a tone junkie. I love this stuff. Okay, enough about Profile Crate. Uh, if you're not signed up for the Tone Junkie email list, just do it if you're a Kemper fan, obviously. Now, I've been getting tons and tons of people asking, HW, what's up with the HX stuff? Are you going to do Helix patches? You, you've been hinting at IRs. What's up? Yeah, we're doing a bunch of IRs. I'm knee deep in trying to do IRs right now. And here is my thoughts on the HX Stomp after having it for like one or two days. Here it is. Uh, I've used it um, just once or twice. But here's the thing. I've used um, native. I'm a native user. Uh, and I've I own a he I've owned two helixes in the past, and I currently own one, even though I'm loaning it to John too. And um, and then also the Suze has stop. I haven't really used the stop much, but I've used those other units, so I've used everything in the stop. So I have some thoughts and opinions about this. Now, a lot of people make stuff. They make presets. There's a lot of people out there who are making stuff for the Helix. And we've been Kemper people exclusively. And a lot of people have been going, Can I, are you going to do Helix stuff? Here's the answer to that. We're going to approach it a little bit differently. There's a lot of people making presets and stuff and doing all that. And I think that's awesome. Um, I'm, 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 I support a lot of those guys. And I'm going to be shouting out a lot of those guys. Um and uh, uh, they make some great stuff, really great stuff. Uh, Worst tutorial guys make some great stuff. Troy, Guitar for His Glory, makes some great stuff. Um, re really great sounding stuff. The videos sound tremendous. Um, and that's what's really, it's really been their videos that have made me going, huh, maybe I should put some more time into really getting some great tone out of these units. So here's what's happening, though. 
with me, and here's been my complaint about the HX uh, whole family of gear. Not my complaint, really, but why I'm not using it weekly, uh, why I'm still with my Kemper. Um, I've just, in the process of making so many Kemper profiles, I've discovered what I really like in mic position, in mic placement. I've discovered um, some speaker choices that I really like, some speaker choices that I just don't see in there. And we have to be honest with ourselves, too. Whenever you're going to make the amount of models, whether it's modeled effects, modeled amps, modeled speakers, modeled microphones, you're going to have some models that really nail it and some that I think stray a little bit, at least stray a little bit from how I use the gear. And so that's kind of where I'm at with the HX stuff, with all of it. Um, to me, like in particular, the 57 model doesn't quite sound like when I mic up my 57 and I kind of do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like I can't really get a hold of what exactly I'm doing differently. The model sounds a bit different than I have it sound in the real life. And I prefer the real life, my real life, how I'm setting up my 57 when I'm trying to match it with a ribbon mic to create these profiles. So we're going to do some IRs. We're going to do IRs specifically intended for Helix and the HX family of stuff, specifically because I think so many people out there want to use this stomp on a pedal board. And because of that, I'm making some IRs. I'm building a pedal board around this unit, and I'm going to be testing it all live. And when it's ready, I'm going to put it out. It's going to be ready fairly soon, by the way, because um, the IRs are... I've been just testing microphone stuff, and there's a couple more pieces of gear I need to get. Um, the One of the great things about making the Kemper Profiles is um, I, I have a, a, a little stable of, of gear that I've been using to make these profiles, and, and it hasn't changed. And I found that I have a real setup that I like. I like a certain mic combination, and I've experimented with some other things, but I've just borrowed things here and there, different mics and stuff. Um, but I, I, I need to make – I need to – there's one or two more mics I want to include uh, because I like the sound of them. Um, and so, and I want to give you the options on those IRs. Here's why. Not because I think they're totally necessary, but because you can run double IRs on double amps with these things, I think it's really useful to be able to combine these IRs together. And so you may just want, um, you may just be wanting uh, a, a 121 by itself or a 101 by itself um, as opposed to with other things you may be wanting uh, you know 421 by itself uh, and so and I haven't been using those for the profiles really I've been I've used a Royer several times but I haven't used a 121 anyway uh, I'm sorry I haven't used a 421 um, I have been using the 121 too many numbers I'm talking about here. Here's my point. You need. Uh, I, I, we're making some pro, some some IRs for this. It's gonna sound great. It's gonna sound lovely. Specifically, we're doing a uh, P and W essential IR pack, and it's gonna be if you if you have the Helix, it's gonna be designed specifically. Here you go. Uh, here's 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 this model speaker, this model speaker, and this model speaker with this mic, this mic, this mic, with double mics, with this, with that, and then we're gonna keep expanding from there. One of the things I'm really excited to do is release um, a pack of a, of a mismatched uh, matchless cab with both speakers isolated, both speakers together with double mics, uh, uh, and then single speakers by themselves, um, single speakers with, with double mics, single speakers with single mics. So you're going to have all sorts of combinations. You're going to be able to combine all these IRs. It's going to be really awesome. Um, let me give you my thoughts on the HX Stomp. Uh, after having it for one night and trying to start looking around at the gear I've got here, I'm probably going to do a Cali 76, a KOT, some sort of a Tube Screamer, uh, maybe a Fuzz, this guy, and I'm thinking the I might just go for an HX, uh, an HX FX, or maybe I'll get another reverb and delay unit. I'm building a board, and I'm trying to put myself in there and really, really do this right, build a board for this thing. Here's my thoughts. This thing is amazing at what it promises. It's amazing at what it does. But I got to say this. I am not, I originally, before I got this, said, okay, well, you can use six blocks. You can get two amps, two amp models. Um, you can run them to two cabs or IRs. And then you can go ahead and run some verbs or something. I think this is true of all units. It's true of the Kemper and everything. 
When you sit at home and dial in a tone, you're listening to the guitar by itself. We've talked about this. When you listen to the guitar by itself, you tend to prefer more frequencies rather than less. You tend to prefer deeper bass, more bass, and a deeper bass. You tend to prefer um, just a lot of low end and a lot of thickness and a lot of big frequencies. I think every unit, I think I think guitar players for so long, the reason I think digital gear is so much better than tube gear when you're taking it out, a lot of people just turned off this video right now. I don't care. I've been talking about this. Consistency is is a real is a really important thing. I just recently recorded a record, uh, a live record, and we recorded it live and then I did all the overdubs. All of my live tones, which I've dialed in live and I've dialed in with stems, have I played them live when I got into the studio later to do the overdubs we barely changed any tones to, to better fit the mix we didn't need to because it was consistent 100% what I've been doing because, I, because I've dialed it in and mix after mix after mix playing these songs with that band so when we did it live it sounded great in my in-ears and then we got in the studio and the producer's like I, I wouldn't change anything and we tried to change some stuff. And then once we tried to change some stuff, it didn't get better. And we said, well, I guess we had it right the first time. <laughs> so here's my thoughts here. Guitar players for so long have just brought in amplifiers and then we rely on a sound guy to put on mics and EQ and do everything. There's always a front of the house EQ that has to go on stuff, unless you're using gear like this. And I think what I think is best, and this is what I do with my Kemper, what I think is best is I have a performance that I have saved and I only use it live. I've dialed it in live with the band playing with my in-ear mix. It sounds how I want it to sound in the mix. It cuts. It's got the, the amount of delay and reverb. Probably more delay and reverb than people realize is on there because when you isolate those tracks, they're so wet. Because when you are playing in a mix, you lose the subtlety of that delay and reverb. You dial in yourself. You go, that's enough. You need more. You need less, but here's the rules. You need less bass, more mid-range. You need more present high end. You need more delay. You need more reverb. That's it. You need more, and then you need, and, and you need less bass. So as soon as, I can just tell you, I can just grab someone's gear and, and listen to them, love it in their room, and they'll go, but I'm having problem live. And I could just take their gear, and I just know exactly what to do. Cut the bass, turn up the presence, little treble. You can boost some mid-range. Um... That cutting, that higher presence gets you through the extra amount of delay and reverb you have to add to, because you can't hear the subtlety of the delay and reverb, so everything sounds drier. Then you play that, then, then you turn up the delay and reverb. You play it by yourself and you'll say, I hate this, no way. But then you go play it in the mix and you are going to be money. You are going to be money. You are going to be money. Anyway, I've done I'm, I've done it with so many people and they always say the same thing. And then we put out, and then I we've put out live files performances and stuff and people go it's too wet how do you play with this and we go please just play with it on a sunday morning and every time the people come back the dudes from the groups come back and they're like it was perfect it was the most perfect sound i ever had out of the kemper how did you know it needed to be that way trial and error dude just here's the th here's the reason why we know it needs to be that way walk in and just don't be afraid to make big adjustments live so it sounds right when you're playing it live when you do that and then you come back home and start doing it, you're undoing the progress. Here's my issue with this. Actually, it's not an issue. It's just a statement I want to make. I think this little unit is going to get maxed out with what I want to do to get the amp tone. I don't think I'm going to have any blocks left because I'm trying to do double amp in stereo with two IRs and then I'm probably going to do two EQs after that. Now, you might be saying, HW, wait a minute. If, if you're so great at making these IRs, uh, then how come you can't make them that they don't need an EQ? Well, they're not going to need an EQ. But you need an EQ. You need an EQ. The Kemper needs an EQ. This thing needs an EQ. You could just EQ the amp, but I really do feel it's uh, you're, you get a lot out of the studio profile here. And I have another surprise coming up with those EQs and how we're going to get to them, how we're going to get to those EQ values because I have a very, very scientific approach to how we are going to be getting to the values of the EQs that I'm going to be putting in the HX Stomp stuff from Tone Junkie that I'm going to be suggesting you pair with your EQs. Now, you don't need to use the whatever Tone Junkie puts in here. You can just get the IRs 
and, and match it with your stuff. Um, match it with other people's stuff even. And uh, hopefully you're going to be seeing some people using some Tone Junkie IRs and it's and they're going to love them. They are going to love them. Trust me. Um, so that's my thoughts. My Here's my only thoughts on the HX Stomp. Uh, last thing I'll say about this. Uh, to summarize what I'm saying here is six blocks to me is going to prove to be enough to sound amazing as an amp. If you want to go stereo with two amps. Now, if you want to just go... If you want to just go one single amp mono, one single IR, you got pl plenty of room. But if you want to go stereo, this is going to max you out. You can see my re... I realize there's a reflection on this HX Stomp. You can see the computer screen in front of me and the camera and my reverb store. Anyway, um, what's going to happen for me is if I want to go stereo, I'm going to eat up all these blocks with two amps, two IRs, and two EQs. If I want to go single, I'm going to be able to use these for delays and everything, and it's going to work really well. I like that idea, but um, I don't want to be limited, but um, it could work. It could work uh, both ways. I'm going to go with this just being my main amp thing, and I always want to have that EQ there. And here's why I really want that EQ there. What I love about EQ and what I love about the Helix and the Kemper and everything is that when you dial in your tone live, you have it, you can save it, and you're done. And then when you get back home, you can copy it, or you can just go in, you can build another, you know, bank or preset, whatever your unit calls it, and you can have that for home. So I have tone I love at home when I'm playing by myself, because when I, because listen, solo guitar is a thing. I play guitar solo in my room all the time. I compose stuff, I mess around, I just play. Sometimes I just play along with backing tracks and my guitar is way loud, so I'm not trying to get it to cut through the mix. It's way louder than everything else. It doesn't need to cut through the mix. It says it's louder than everything else in the mix. And that's the tone I use. And I enjoy that tone at home for playing, for practicing. And I don't have these sort of dense mixes that I have to cut through, maybe even spatially. Maybe I'm using an amp that's over on this side of the room and I got a dense mix coming out of my monitors that's a totally different sonic scenario than trying to get that sound of the amp over there to fit into the monitors that you're listening in front of you right so when you take that guitar sound from the back of the room from an amp back there and you put it in those monitors you don't have the space anymore that used to be segregating that sound where that tone worked because this was the mix that was the mix was that's behind you everything else is in front of you now the mix is everything's in one spot in front of you. Now you're dealing left and right and reverb becomes the 3D dimension. Last little word of wisdom I'm going to leave you with. Guys, reverb is 3D panning, right? Isn't it? Reverb is 3D panning. That should be on a t-shirt. Reverb is 3D panning. I'm HW. Thank you so much for listening to Tone Junkie Podcast, episode 33. Um... Can you do me a favor? If you're still listening and you're into this, um, can you want if you wouldn't mind leave a review if you listen through Apple Music or iTunes. Someone left me a review on there that I I won't say it hurt my feelings, but it did. It said it said this guy really likes hearing himself talk, which I thought to myself was like, well, that's a weird thing to accuse someone of. You like to hear yourself talk. I thought. I think that's like a needlessly clever way to say the thing that you're trying to say. I don't love to hear myself talk. I love to talk. The reason I know that is that I don't listen back to these podcasts. I just enjoy doing them. So I don't love to hear myself talk. I love to talk. So if you listen and, and I see the numbers on how many people listen and it really is staggering. Um, would you leave me in? If you enjoy the podcast, leave a review. That would be that would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. HW out.